Good morning. Welcome to Worcester Park Baptist Church. My name is Rowena. I'm part of the worship team here. A reminder that today we're sharing communion, so if you want to join in with that, please just do provide your own drink and uh, cracker or, or bread. So let's begin our time together as we look to God and find comfort and joy in him and his words. I'm going to read Psalm, part of Psalm 121. I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not, not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. So it's time now on this third Advent Sunday to uh, light our Advent candles. And so thank you to Alice and Ida and their grandparents. So do join in with the words, thank you for this season of comfort and joy. Then you're invited to uh, sing our first two songs, Blessing and Honour and The Splendour of the King. And after this, Karis will bring her all-age talk. and Jackie will share news of our Alpha online course starting in January. At this time of Advent, and as we light these candles, we thank God for joy. May God's joy fill your heart today. Thank you for this season of comfort and joy. Blessing and honor, glory and power, be unto the ancient of days. From every nation, all of creation.
Christmas tree is up so you know that the big event has happened in our house and now we can really settle down and focus on Christmas but I told you last time that we just have so many decorations that we have too many to actually fit on the tree but the thing is I just can't get rid of them and some very special decorations that I really can't get rid of are the ones that have been made for me by my two children. Now, I have to hope that they don't see this video um, before Christmas so that I don't get struck off their Christmas list for embarrassing them and showing these decorations to you. Because for some reason, they don't want them on the Christmas tree anymore. There's this one beautiful bauble that was sewn by son number one and then we've got a decorated bauble that's been covered in glitter and sprinkles here we've got a lovely christmas stocking 
that was made oh about 12 years ago and I've still got it and a wreath cardboard wreath a little bit uh, squash but there it is and I think this has got to be my favorite the one that has a little photograph right in the middle of it the problem is that because these decorations were made when the boys were so much younger and not so mature and sophisticated as they are now they're a little bit embarrassed about them and to be honest they aren't top quality they haven't been put together by a professional but they have been made with enthusiasm and love but I guess you wouldn't find them on a shelf in a Christmas shop to be honest these decorations are hidden in the box every year and they're not really allowed to see the light of day until I get them out to do a little bit of reminiscing and I'm sure that every mum and dad out there has got some little decorations like this just to help keep their memories, homemade decorations for Christmas. The trouble is that these decorations are a little bit embarrassing. It's best to forget about them, not bring them out into the open. Then nobody will need to worry about them. We can forget that they ever existed. Maybe you're a bit of a Christmas snob and you like to have your tree looking absolutely perfect, balanced and symmetrical with the most luxurious decorations. And you don't want to really spoil your tree with things like this so you just leave them to the side don't let them clutter up your tree hopefully if you just put them away no one will even realize that they were there in the first place well i was wondering whether these kind of thoughts were the ones that joseph might have felt in our bible passage today we're going to hear about the time when the angel Gabriel came to see Joseph after he had found out that his wife-to-be Mary was going to have a baby. The two of them were engaged but not yet married and Joseph knew for sure that the baby that Mary was expecting was not his. She told him that an angel had appeared to her to tell her that she would be having a baby and that he would be God's son and now I expect Mary was beginning to show a bit poor Joseph the Bible tells us he was a good man he didn't want to make a big fuss but he must have felt a little bit embarrassed about the whole situation it wasn't how he had hoped it would be and so Joseph was planning to quietly break off his engagement and put Mary back in the box, as it were, so that he could just forget that the whole relationship had ever existed. But then, the angel Gabriel came to see him. He came to Joseph to bring some comfort and joy. Do not be afraid, he said to Joseph, in a similar greeting to the one that he'd used with Mary. But it wasn't because Joseph was trembling at his appearance. We need to read the whole greeting from the angel. The angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. The angel was telling Joseph not to be embarrassed, not to worry about what other people thought, but to be proud of Mary, to love her and to continue to support her and be with her throughout her whole pregnancy. And then through the birth of her child, who would turn out to be God's son, the saviour of the world. So when you're putting up your decorations or thinking about your decorations this year, why don't you remember Joseph? Why don't we hang all our decorations with pride and remember how special and unique they are, how they represent the love and the creativity of our family and friends. And let's remember too, to include Jesus, the most important part of Christmas in everything that we do. Every day we ask so many questions. What should I wear? What's the weather going to be like? How am I going to fit everything in? But then there are those bigger questions, like why am I here? Where am I heading? 
Is there more to life than this? I had arrived at an answer to the most important issue that we humans ever deal with, is there a God? And I had arrived there without ever really looking at the evidence. And I was supposed to be a scientist. At 28, uh, I had gotten many of the things that I thought I wanted. You know, my girlfriend was on the cover of magazines, I had a Beamer, and I was so unhappy. It was a realization maybe that I would, I would never find happiness where I was looking for. I think for so many years, you know, I always just strived to be strong in myself. All I needed was me and my buddies and, you know, would be like invincible. But the truth is, none of us are. And I found purpose, I found meaning, I found hope. God took something so broken and made it a beautiful art piece. Alpha is a place where you can be yourself. You can say what you think and challenge everything. No, no question is too complex or too simple. And what your point of view is, is as important as anyone else's. We are going on a journey together, an adventure to explore the questions of life, faith, and meaning. Hello, my name is Jackie and I'm so excited to be part of the team running the online Alpha course here at Worcester Park Baptist Church. As you saw in the video, the Alpha course is a place to explore the Christian faith alongside others in a safe, non-threatening environment. So what happens at Alpha online? Well, there's food of course. Yes, a dessert will be delivered to your door. We'll watch a talk on video and there'll be a discussion, a chance to ask those big questions, which perhaps for some this year may be more poignant. And guess what? Being online means we'll be in the comfort of our own homes. Amazing. The course starts in January and all the details are on the church website or Facebook page. So let's pray about this upcoming course. Dear God, we thank you for this Alpha course and the opportunity to host it. Thank you for all those who have offered to help so far. And Lord, we ask that you would bring to mind regularly those we'd like to invite, those who have questions. We pray that they would say yes to our invitations and come and explore the Christian faith at Alpha online. Amen. I invite you to join me for a time of prayer and uh, do join with amens at the end. I'm going to begin with a contemporary version of the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, help us to honour your name. Come and set up your kingdom so that everyone on earth will obey you as you are obeyed in heaven. Give us our food for today. Forgive us for doing wrong as we forgive others. Keep us from being tempted and protect us from evil. Amen. With COVID cases rising, we pray for the rollout of the vaccines, Lord. For those in our church family who are affected in any way, we ask for your comfort and healing. We continue to pray for those recently bereaved, 
for your peace in their hearts. We think of those fearful of what new tier restrictions might bring. In all the uncertainties of life, we thank you, God, for your faithfulness. Help us to keep trusting in you. Amen. Father God, thank you that you are my comfort and joy. On the days when I am overwhelmed, help carry my pain for me. When I am weak, be my strength. When I have no words, intercede on my behalf. Help me forgive those who have hurt me and help me recognise the times when I have hurt others. In Jesus' name. Amen. And now Mary's going to bring us a reading from God's word before uh, Gavin shares communion and preaches on the passage. The reading is from Matthew chapter 1 starting at verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man, he did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly, But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfil what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. Thank you, Marina, for leading us for our service today and everybody else that has taken part. So we're gonna gather around the Lord's table now. As we do that, we're gathering around the table in Advent, in this time of preparation for the Christ to come into our lives and into this world. And it's gonna flow straight from communion into the message as well so one thing after the other so listen to the invitation that god gives us come to me all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens and i will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for i am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy And my burden is light, says Jesus. Therefore, we come to this table, not because we must, but because we may. We come, not because we are strong, but because we are weak. We come because there's no goodness in our own that gives us a right to come, but because we need mercy and help. We come because we love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. We come because he loved us and gave himself for us. So come and meet the risen Christ, for we are his body. I don't know who's there with you in the room sharing this time, Um, but parents, of course, we leave it to your discretion on whether it's right for your children to take bread and wine. And if you join in with us and uh, uh, you don't feel you're ready there, just just sit, join with us and be blessed and feel God near. But, uh, but we do welcome all the want to gather around the Lord's table. Come, Andy, come and break bread and drink wine.
Let us prepare ourselves with an Advent prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, the world awaits you in the longing of the persecuted for justice, in the longing of the poor for prosperity, in the longing of the privileged for riches greater than wealth, in the longing of our hearts for a better life, and in the song of your church, expectation is ever present. O oh, come, Lord, desire behind our greatest needs. O oh, come, Lord, liberator of humanity. O oh, come, Lord, O oh, come, Emmanuel. The Apostle Paul tells us of the institution of the Lord's Supper. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Well, let's give thanks for bread and wine. Father God, at this time of Advent, as we approach Christmas, we remember that Jesus came into the world, the Son of God, Emmanuel, amongst us and with us, that he was born one of us, the lowliest amongst us, born in a barn amongst the cattle with parents delighted, watching over, but anxious at how this will all outfold. And so now as we gather around the table, we remember that this babe that became the boy, that became the man, invites us, this one who has experienced our life, has been resurrected from the, de from the dead and has ascended into heaven, now he is here by his spirit and welcomes us around this table to join him as our ascended Lord. So we come and we ask that you bless the bread and wine that we drink, that we may know the presence and nearness of God in this act of eating and drinking. Amen. Amen. If you have some bread and some wine, crackers and juice, whatever it might be, please do prepare to take that. Jesus said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in memory of me. Take this in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, this cup is the new covenant, still by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this in memory of me. Let us drink and remember that Christ's blood was shed for us and give thanks. Amen. Let us be still for a moment before the Lord. Father God, we give you thanks for these symbols of your body and your blood given for us that we may be able to draw near to you. 
we thank you for this time of gathering around the table. The invitation to be with you, Jesus, to be in God's presence. And so we give you thanks and we accept the gift of your life given to us. Amen. 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 We thank God for the opportunity to gather around this table. Uh, so often we think of the ministry of word and sacrament, of breaking bread and drinking wine together, and then the breaking open of the word as well. So we've had our reading today that was taken from Matthew chapter 1 and verses 18 to 25. Uh, it was uh, the story of Jesus, that story of his coming into the world, the story of his father and the wrestlings that his father went through. But the theme is uh, over this Advent series and Christmas series is uh, comfort and joy. And so we're going to think about how that may apply to this message that we have. So let's think. Well, the Gospels, like any good story, uh, give us perspectives to add depth and to the unfolding narrative that we have before us. So there are perspectives. You can look at the gospel story from different ways. The two perspectives that we have in the nativity, well, there are more than two perspectives, but the main two, um, and only one of them that I want to draw, draw attention to today, is Joseph and Mary. And their two, two accounts, their two stories within the gospels, can feel that they're exactly the same, but the perspective is quite different. They're recording the same events, but they're looking at them through the eyes of, uh, of the young girl and the eyes of the young man and how each one of them deals with what is going on before them. We have the pregnant fiance, Mary, and the seemingly betrayed young man, Joseph. So firstly, let's think about comfort. The word that comes there, the word of comfort is this. Do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. Are the words of comfort that God speaks through the angel to Joseph. Into the complexity of the situation that Joseph is in, and it is a complex situation, uh, go back 2,000 years and find out that your to-be wife is already pregnant, it's kind of trouble. So uh, in that situation, the complexity of that situation, the angel visits, assuring... Uh, now, we know that the angel visits uh, Joseph, and there's an angel uh, visits Mary, and we know that, that, in fact, the thing that unites the two of them in this story is the fact that the angel says to both of them, don't be afraid. Uh, it seems like anything but not being afraid. It, it feels like time to get really anxious about this. But those are the words. Now, I guess we think of that Joseph was a holier man than we are. Or Mary was made out of different stuff than we are. The truth is that they were two young people about to set out on the adventure of married life and then before they could, Mary was found to be pregnant. So try uh, being Joseph in that situation. We may think that Joseph, you know, just knew that, you know, knew everything straight away. Oh, this will be fine. You know, God must be in this. It seems anything, anything further from the truth. He's anxious. He's worried. He's concerned. Uh, you can tell his sleep, his unrest. He's not sure what to do. Should he dismiss her, get rid of her, quietly divorce her? He didn't want to cause her any, any major problem, and he could have, um, but he didn't know what to do. The ancient laws surrounding such mishaps could be devastating and sometimes lethal. Yet God was in the adventure with them. Angelic visitations make the point that this was God at work. So what can we learn from this situation, this complex situation, 
that, that Joseph finds himself in, and he's wrestling with it. And then God sends the angel who says, this is of God, this is the will of God, accept it, marry, Mary, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Well, the truth is for us is that like Joseph, life gets complicated at times. It's not often easy for us to flee from the situations that we find ourselves in. Circumstance normally means that we have to go through it. We can't run away from these complex situations and these things we're going through. But, though I wouldn't directly attribute the coronavirus to the will of God, this has been something that none of us can flee from. It's a pandemic. And so even if we had wanted to flee to another place, another part of the world, there was nowhere to go. And sometimes it's like that in life. It feels like in the, in the difficulties that we have, that God hems us in with those difficulties and those things because we need to turn and rely on him. And we need to hear his words. Don't be afraid. And we need to be able to respond to those words in faith. In the midst of their and our trials and tribulations, God says, do not be afraid. And we need to hold those words. Do not be afraid. We need to hold those words for ourselves. Joseph, as did Mary, heard the word of God, do not be afraid, and they believed it. We... They believed it, and we, like them, find God's comfort when we turn to face him. Joseph was unable to do what he intended to do, and that was to divorce Mary quietly. He believed and he turned to God, and the torment of his life subsided, and joy began to flourish. These are the second things. We had comfort when they're thinking about joy. The joy that Joseph was able to take Mary as his wife. And they had that event, that adventure of Mary, marriage as those young people. Joseph was called to be part of the Holy Family. He was the shelter and refuge for the Son of God, Emmanuel, God with us. was there in Joseph's home that the Son of God grew to be the man that he became and the saviour that he was. We never know what God has in store for us and certainly in those early stages of Joseph's wrestling when he got that comfort, when he got that assurance and then some of that joy began to well up in his life as he realised he was a part of a great adventure I know that sometimes we wish we, you, you know, we never know what God has in store for us when we take one step. And sometimes, sometimes maybe that we wish that we didn't know what was in store for us. Uh, maybe the things that have happened to us, many of those we wouldn't have chosen for ourselves. And no doubt Joseph went through some of the same heartache and anxiety that all parents do for their children. But he was spared the crucifixion. Mary endured that without the comfort of her husband. Above all this, what we learn from Joseph today is that the words to him still speak to us. God says, do not be afraid. Why? Because Christ is with us. Emmanuel is here. Turn your head and see. And who knows? We may be surprised by joy. At this time of Advent, we need comfort and joy. Maybe more than we've ever done before. Along with all the other aspects of life. The things we don't want and the things that we do, God tempers our lives with comfort and joy if we turn to him.
Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining with us today. We're going to close with the, the familiar words from the book of Numbers. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. You are invited to join in with our Zoom coffee morning. And uh, today we're going to be welcoming Mel and Patricia into church membership here at Worcester Park. So I hope you can join us. I'll see you then. <laughs>